Well, the wait is finally over as the new Bucky's in Athens opens tomorrow morning. Way 31's Matt Pasquitt spent the day there and has more on how excited Limestone County is for it to open. Well, after nearly a year of construction and lots of excitement surrounding it, Bucky's is finally about to open. And for the Limestone community, they just cannot wait. This will probably be the biggest thing in Limestone County. The anticipation for the new Bucky's has been high, and it is finally about to open. For local officials, the arrival of the travel stop is exciting. This right here is a great win for the city of Athens and plus Limestone County, but it's not only just for Limestone County, Athens a big win, it's the win for the state. You know, the state of Alabama, this will be a tourist attraction, be a destination. People who stop off to fill up their cars will be greeted with 120 pumps. More pumps means more gas tax revenue for the county. You know, the one of the big things here is going to be they're going to sell gas, and that'll be a major plus for the infrastructure needs of, of Alabama, Limestone County. Bucky's also created 250 new job opportunities. A lot of people will come to this area for these jobs. You know, I mean, you know, when you got a good paying job, you know, I know there's a sign, you know, they're starting out at 17 to 22 dollars an hour. I mean, you know, that's that's a great starter position. And for Colin Daly, he cannot wait to try a Bucky's staple. I'm sure I'll buy me a, a Mark, my engineer, he'll say, let's get us a brisket sandwich. That's what we'll get us a brisket sandwich. I I'm, can't wait to get one. I spoke to one employee with Bucky's today who says if you want to be here when they open tomorrow at 6 a.m., you better get here bright and early because they're saying right now they're expecting a crowd of over a thousand people all waiting to see what Bucky's is all about. In Athens, I'm Matt Paskowitz, Way 31 News. All right, Matt, thank you. And the fun continues tomorrow morning here on Way 31. We will have live reports from Bucky's tomorrow morning starting on Way 31 Morning News. Actor Jason David Frank, the original star of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series, has died at the age of 49. Frank debuted at the, as the Green Power Ranger before morphing into White Power Ranger in later episodes. The mixed martial artist performed many of his own stunts in the hit TV series, which ran from 1993 to 1996. His cause of death in Texas is not immediately known. Frank's representative has asked for privacy for the actor's family and friends. Two of America's largest railroad unions to announce results of members' votes. The vote revealing whether they are closer to a strike. And former President Donald Trump back on Twitter why he says there's no reason for his reinstatement. And I'll get to your Monday morning forecast and plan out your Thanksgiving holiday for you. Coming up in just a few minutes.
New at 10, two of America's largest railroad unions are set to reveal whether they are closer to a strike tomorrow. The unions representing engineers and conductors will announce whether or not their members voted to accept a deal brokered by the White House. The sticking point is more about working conditions than wage increases for the 60,000 railroad workers who are members of the two unions. One estimate warns the U.S. economy would lose $2 billion each day railroad workers are on strike. Congress could prevent or end a strike by extending a cooling off period during which the unions cannot strike or by opposing a contract on union members. Elon Musk reinstated former President Donald Trump's Twitter account Saturday night, but Trump doesn't seem to be in a rush to start using the platform again. Truth Social uh, is, is through the roof. It's doing phenomenally well. Truth Social has been very, very powerful, very, very strong. And I'll be staying there, but I hear we're getting a big vote to also go back on Twitter. Uh, I, I don't see it because I don't see any reason for it. Trump was banned from Twitter for 22 months following last year's January 6th attack on the Capitol. Musk, the new owner of Twitter, Twitter, based on his decision on a poll that he conducted after 15 million votes, Trump was reinstated by a 52 to 48 percent margin. But as Twitter struggles with a number of issues, many advocates worry changes by Elon Musk could cause harm to people with disabilities. Over the years, Twitter has become an essential public space for people with disabilities because of its unique format and broad reach. The format was really easy. It was a social, an easy social media platform for blind and deaf people to use. Many also use Twitter to help pay for basic needs such as fundraising for housing, medication, and health care. Amazon's Kindle is now 15 years old. The company launched the e-reader device November 19, 2007. When it was introduced, the Kindle pushed the publishing industry to further embrace digital books and also kick-started the Amazon's hardware efforts. Over the years, the Kindle has offered larger screens and touch screens, the ability to adjust font size and spacing, and better processors. Tech insiders say Amazon will likely keep selling the device for a long time. Heavy snow is expected to keep piling up in western New York State through the evening. That's after a historic storm saw the Buffalo area launching record snowfall, totaling more than six feet in some areas. Areas around Watertown seen here picked up more than 72 inches of snow. Historic numbers for that region that's used to seeing a lot of snow. The storm has made travel in the region extremely difficult, triggering road closures, driving bans, and flight cancellations the weekend before the Thanksgiving holiday. Weather coverage you can count on with meteorologist Grace Anello and the Way 31 Storm Tracker Early Warning Radar Network. Well, we're looking beautiful and calm all across North Alabama and Southern Tennessee tonight. You can see on each of our sky cameras, while the sun is long since set, those beautiful city lights are shining through. The Way 31 Storm Tracker Early Warning Radar Network is completely dry, 1015 on your Sunday evening, and it's going to stay dry for the rest of tonight and even into tomorrow. But what we do have that I want to let you know is a strong breeze coming out of the northeast at about 10 miles an hour there for most of us. So if you are still outside today or you're playing planning to be just a little bit later on. Well, it's going to be feeling even colder than our measured temperatures because of that wind. All right, well, let's talk about our measured temperatures. Most of us right now hanging out in the mid 20s. We're at 27 degrees in Huntsville, 29 in Decatur. Good night to you. And over in Moulton, you are at 24 degrees. So we are on the chilly side of things, but folks, we're only getting colder as we head through the rest of the night tonight. We will be completely clear with no cloud cover to keep us warm with your overnight low temperature in the low 20s. Now, some of our counties will make it to the upper teens tonight for that low, which means that if you do have an extra blanket you can throw on the bed or if you could crank the temperature up one or two degrees warmer, well, tonight's probably the night that you're going to want to do that. And tomorrow is the morning you're going to want to get out to the car just a few minutes early to let the engine warm up and, of course, to defrost that windshield at 6 a.m. when you first wake up temperatures again in the low 20s. But then by 7 when you're out the door, it's 24 degrees. It's 9 a.m 
before we even make it into the 30s. So pack the extra layers on the kids, bring your own jacket and gloves for yourself. And yeah, leave an extra few minutes as you get out to the car to make sure that the windshield is defogged and the engine is nice and warm and ready to get you to your destination safely. Well, the good news is as we head through the rest of your Monday, once the sun does rise and we start to warm, we start to warm quickly. Our high temperature is actually in the mid 50s. That's right. So we're going from low 20s to mid 50s in the same day. And that is just Alabama for you. We will have plenty of sunshine and then we introduce just a few clouds by dinner time and into overnight tomorrow night by 9 p.m. Temperatures comfortably back in the upper 30s. It will not be as chilly of a night on Monday night as we're expecting tonight. Well, our all eyes are on Thanksgiving and here's what's cooking. We're looking at 64 degrees for our high temperature on Thursday. Now we will have partly sunny skies first thing in the morning. By the time we get into late lunch, late afternoon and even into the evening and dinner time hours, there will be a cold front passing through that's going to bring some scattered showers to our region at that point. So don't go canceling your plans just yet, but know if you are going to be outside the morning time of Thanksgiving is the time to do that. We will have some cloud cover, but that will be the calmest and the driest part of your Thanksgiving day. So we are warm and in the mid and upper 50s Monday and Tuesday. We do introduce a little bit of rain on Tuesday. Your Thanksgiving Thursday brings temperatures that are in the mid 60s. We will have some rain later on Thursday afternoon into overnight hours and that carries over into Black Friday as well. But then by next weekend, we've got plenty of sunshine. Muscle Shoals Sound Studio releasing new podcast episodes monthly. Why its two hosts say it can reach people all over the world. One, two, three, check, 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 check. One, two, three, check, check, check. Check, 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 check. One, two, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Check, 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 check. Are they not getting anything? What's going on? Check, check. The long check, I guess. Said something about needing some audio chocolate.
We are following breaking news right now just into the newsroom. This is out of Franklin County, Tennessee, where a man was found with a gunshot wound. The sheriff's office says they were called to a home on Freedom Lane for a burglary where they found 47 year old Jonathan Rollins with at least one gunshot wound. Now Rollins was transported to the hospital in Tennessee, but was later pronounced dead. Police are still investigating. Stick with Way 31 for updates to this story. New at 10, Muscle Shoals Sound Studio is moving into the digital age with its podcast. It's hosted by songwriters Mark Naramore and Debbie Wilson. Their podcast promotes the working studio and history behind it. It's so local and international fans can keep up with all that's going on musically in the Shoals. Social media has become a part of our lives in every way, and especially in music. Like Debbie said, we can get out to... Belgium this morning. Uh, some of those folks can tune in in their afternoon, uh, whatever they drink over there in the afternoon tea and other things, but Germany, and we can just reach a whole gamut of folks. Even right after the Facebook site was put up, it grew uh, very quickly, and we have different things on there. We have history. We also like to do what's going on now and also make the point that we're a very viable studio. The podcast airs once a month so far. They've had about eight episodes out on their website. And Florence Children's Museum has a new display. Lowe's Hometown Heroes volunteers constructed a learning stage for the museum. The display sits right in front of the museum, offering local teachers and students with an interactive learning experience. This is a corporate hometown. They've given the grant. They, they get the local stores involved. We also, through Lowe's on the local store branch, we have the Lowe's Heroes. So it is where the employees in the store go in and um, we pick a project within the community and the, the employees come out and volunteer for that. This is sponsored by Shoals Junior League. The volunteers still have three more projects that they want to complete by the spring. The 87th Iron Bowl is just days away. The stakes may not be as high this year, but that won't stop teams from putting it all on the line. How Cadillac Williams is approaching his first battle with Alabama as head coach, next in sports.
30 seconds. Tape, we are going to need a battery for this IFB if you hey, have it handy. Did it go out? Yes. Okay. All right. And now, sports coverage you can count on with Way 31 sports anchor Max Cohan. Every Sunday feels like a holiday when you're a football fan. Well, another Sunday has come and gone, and a full slate of football brought joy and heartbreak into homes across America. Let's not waste any time and get into the action. We head out to Atlanta, where the Falcons were looking to end their two-game skid with a win over the Vikings. Made his way back into the end zone for his second score of the season and first one since week one, reeling in Jalen Hurts' 22-yard dime in the Eagles' win over the Colts. Watkins hauled in both of his targets for 31 yards. Also in the win, the Eagles' other Athens native Reed Blankenship recorded a tackle for the Birds. And out in Pittsburgh, it was another perfect day for Money Mac. Evan McPherson made all of his attempts, including a 54-yarder in the Bengals' win over the Steelers, while Huntsville's Nicholas Morrow racked up four tackles, including one for a loss in the Bears' loss to the Falcons. Down on the pitch in Tuscaloosa, the Tide are moving on in the NCAA tournament after defeating UC Irvine 3-1 earlier today. Felicia Knox scored twice, and Ashlyn Sarepka added another as Alabama advances to the quarterfinals for the first time in program history. They'll host Duke on Friday. And down at Neville Arena, the Auburn women's basketball team picked up their third win of the season, defeating Alabama State 88-49. The Tigers had three players reach double digits, including Romy Levy, who posted a 16.11 rebound double-double. On the other side of the court, former Hazel Green star Samaya Seal led the Hornets with a career-high 14 points. And in the world of college football, it is officially Rivalry Week, and there are few greater rivalries than the one we have coming up this Saturday. Of course, I'm talking about the Iron Bowl. Sure, it'll be hard to top last year's instant classic that went to quadruple overtime, but even without the high stakes of years past, with no shot at the SEC title for either team, it's hard not to get excited about this one. Number eight, Alabama, looking for yet another 10-win season as the Tigers, under the leadership of Cadillac Williams, look to finish the season with a bowl game. Here's what Coach Lack had to say about this week's challenge. We are going to play football, Auburn football, and whether that's Dallas Cowboys, University of Alabama, you know, great Nick Saban. Man, these kids not going to blink. We not blinking. We're going to flush it. We're going to celebrate tonight. We're going to flush this tomorrow. And we're going to be on to preparing for the Iron Bowl. And look here, we are excited. We're excited for this opportunity. We want to send these seniors off, man. They, they deserve our best, like I told them. Us giving your best, it don't guarantee that we're going to win, but what we can do, we can look ourselves in the mirror and we can be happy with whatever results happen. So we're going to lay it on the line and see what happens. The seventh meeting between Alabama and Auburn is slated to kick off at Bryant-Denny Stadium at 2.30 Saturday. That'll do it for sports. We'll be right back. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, 31 law call coming up. All about family law from divorce. Testing, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Testing, testing, testing. Is this your family? Testing, one, two, three, four, five. Testing. I can. Is this your family?
One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Alrighty, well, when you get the kiddos out the door first thing tomorrow morning, make sure you bundle them up and leave an extra few minutes to defrost that windshield. We're talking about 25 degrees first thing in the morning on Monday. The good news is we'll heat up and heat up quickly with high temperatures for the next several days in the mid 50s and then reaching to the low and mid 60s, including on Thanksgiving Day. Now I am timing out a cold front at the moment. It looks like it's bringing some rain to us on Thursday, but Britt, of course, we're going to keep monitoring that and keep people posted. Exactly, and stay tuned here for 24-7 coverage you can count on local news breaking news and severe weather way tv.com law call starts right now this is way 31 law call good evening and welcome to way 31 law call i'm sharon dovia tonight we're taking your calls and questions about family law just in time for the holidays and some of the stresses of being with the family we're going to take your questions everything from child support to alimony divorce getting child support paid what to do if your ex isn't paying like they're supposed to call in your questions the 31 law call number 256-536-0077 we will also be answering some of your email questions you can send an email question anytime any day of the week you send it to lawcall at waytv.com and when we get to a show that's on point we pull some of those out we will have some of your questions about family law here tonight getting us started tonight will league, league is here from timberlake and league good to have you here Hi, sharon how are you doing well before we start talking about family law and the, right. the difficult problems with family law we've got something happy you've got an event that's coming up we do we do bring your family down downtown huntsville friday and saturday world cup watch party we're listed on fifa's website as official host and watch party we're doing it with our neighbors moe's la esquina the standard melt martin fed Fun. and ripple and so we're gonna have a big jumbotron Fun. and restaurants and purple it's the purple cup district I guess sharon you know what that means <laughs> yes you can get some and carry it around with you if you want right. to right so we'll be downtown this friday from noon to five and sat for the usa england game and saturday for argentina mexico so should be a you know nice event bring the family down hopefully everybody's good we're, tonight we're talking about family law family law so it's um some of the most difficult cases but hopefully family's good bring them down friday and saturday we'll have a big time but to, to move on to the serious topic of family law you know i hear sharon it's, it's some of the most difficult cases that judges hear it when is. it comes into my world if we recover let's say i recover for 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 mom and she has a child support lien against her from father then whatever case that I have is subject to that child support lien. So that's usually when we get involved and we usually consult someone like yourself or Paul Seckel, who we have from Marshall County, does a lot of uh, domestic cases, child support, custody, alimony, divorce, prenuptial agreements, all of it. Paul, welcome. I appreciate you coming up, staying up with us tonight. Thank you guys for having me. So let's talk a little bit about, maybe we start off with the very basic things, the child support calculations. So many people are confused about how a judge comes up with a child support number. Talk a little bit about what goes into figuring out child support. So in Alabama, it's governed by the Alabama Rules of Judicial Administration, Rule 32, which they recently updated in May. And so it basically goes by what the mother's income is, what the father's income is, they combine those, whatever percentage uh, whoever has to pay child support, uh, that's the percentage of the child support calculation from Alabama Rules of Judicial Administration Rule 32 that you would pay. 
Paul, let me ask you this. So I've got a client who we recovered for him, and then there was a lien. The, the, the mother of the child had a lien for child support, so we start addressing that. And in that order, where I'm looking at the order, and it goes, it specifically states they're going outside of Rule 32. My understanding was you calculate the father's income, mother's income, goes into a formula and spits out a number. What are the requirements to go outside of, of Rule 32? Do you have to have a judge's approval? I guess you got approval for everything. So with all divorce cases involving kids, there, there are three forms that are filed, CS 41, 42, and 43. And the 43 specifies if you're going outside the guidelines or you're using those ARJ Rule 32 guidelines and um, for what reason. So yes, typically the judge does have to sign off on it. Um, you guys can deviate by agreement on occasion or um, if there's some kind of special compensation or some kind of special need the child has, uh, then that would be a reason for a deviation. Okay. Judges could even deviate downward sometimes if they, maybe they decide that the, there's a lot of travel involved and somebody's got to have a lot of travel expenses, that might be another way. way. So you can argue some things for your client trying to get it to be different from what the calculation says. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's an interesting case. I mean, so I've got a, a, a Alabama case. We collected quite a, a large recovery for this gentleman. Good. And it's a Texas child support lien and we were put on notice by the attorney, but also DHR yeah. in Texas. So when I'm on notice of that lien, I can't pay the proceeds over that. And so I'm gonna have to get admitted, admitted Pro Hoc Vici to, to argue his case in Texas. And Ooh. could you guys come in or would I need a Texas attorney to, to fight that, Paul and Sharon, you guys are know. domestic I kinda, attorneys. I'm needing help for my client. I kind of think you need a Texas attorney. I would attorney. think you would need a Texas attorney for that as well. Now, um, our DHR uh, lawyers, the child support collection units, can get involved in certain cases, but I don't know if you've got a Texas court wanting that money. Um, you, we're in the beginning stages of it, so it's. Uh, you can take that foreign judgment and register it here with the local circuit clerk, and DHR may be able to help you collect that. Um, but typically I would say it'd be, the safest bet would be to be, to use a Texas attorney. Right, okay. We've got callers with questions. Paul, we've got another Paul. Paul is on the line with a question from Langston. Hi, Paul, thanks for calling. What's your question tonight? Hi, I got a, uh, I owe child support in another state, back child support. Okay. And I have my license suspended. What do I need to do to get it cleared up to get my license? Yeah, right. that's one of the things they can do, right? They can take your license. They can take your passport. They license can, here in yeah. Alabama or license there? Where are you license? License there in, in another state. Okay. Paul, our Paul. Paul, <laughs> talk to him yeah. about that. How can he get that lifted? So, Paul, um, is this through, did they file something here in Alabama or is this in whatever your home state is at? It, it's in the home, my home state that I'm in. They got them suspended there so Alabama won't. Uh, uh, you know, they won't swap them over because there's a hold on them in Florida. Okay, so what you really need to do is consult an attorney in Florida so that they can get that straightened out for you. Um, because as long as Florida's saying, hey, you're, you're not paying your child support, so we're not going to allow you to have a driver's license, then you're going to need to have Florida address that. What about, what about this for the, for the caller? Sometimes I had another case, my client had a recovery and there was another lien and we were able to negotiate. I think it was like a $51,000 child support lien and we were able to negotiate, ne negotiate that down with DHR for about 20, high 20s. Yeah. What's the, what's the standard there? Is each so, state different? It's, it's really, what I've found is that it's up to the person who is owed the money, right? So if, if you owe back support to mom, Mom's got to sign off on it, and if she won't reduce it, DHR is not going to reduce it for her. Paul, Absolutely. have you had any better luck than that? Uh, you know, typically child support is for the support and maintenance of the children uh, or child, and so uh, typically if you're going to downwardly deviate from some kind of order, it does have to be on the recipient's request. Um, Sometimes, okay. some, you know, the, the interest on that, interest on child support is now 7.5%. It used to be 12%. So it, one of the things that is, is 
most commonly negotiated is that interest because it builds up huge. Within about seven years, you double what you owed if you haven't been paying. So take a look at that and, and see if the, the other person would be willing to take a lower amount. Let's take a look at the email question that we got from Jackie. Jackie had written in, it's my understanding property bought in one person's name during the marriage is still marital property of both people. Okay, well, what about property bought prior to the marriage? Paul, talk to us about property in, in the state of Alabama. So typically, if you bring property into marriage, um, it is not marital property. What you wanna do, especially if it's like rental property, property or something like that, you want to deposit those rental proceeds in a completely separate account. You don't want to mix it in with any kind of marital account. Um, if you were to choose to live on that property as the marital residence, then it could potentially become marital property and be subject to division should you get divorced. Uh, so you really want to try to keep those separate as much as possible. That commingling of money will get you in big trouble, right? Same Absolutely. thing for inherited things, right? Absolutely. Yeah, keep you, them separate. You use anything for the benefit of both parties, it's fair game. Is that about right? I think that's about right. Yeah, judges, judges may decide to give you still more of it, but they, they may cross the line and say, yes, your spouse is entitled to at least some. Okay, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about problems people have had with the stimulus money. This is one of the more recent problems that folks who have children and, and, and child support and, and tax issues, divorce people, have had problems with the stimulus payments they got during COVID, right? Paul, what did you see? Absolutely, so, you know, a lot of orders say that you claim, if you have one child, one of them gets claimed by the father one year, the mother an odd number of years, whatever. Uh, and so a lot of times those stimulus checks came in on whoever last filed taxes on the child. So, and the other parties didn't want to separate those. So it's been a little bit of not used for the purpose intended uh, when they put that stimulus out there. And I haven't really seen how any judges decide to do it. Uh, it uh, uh, it hasn't, hasn't come up with any of my cases to actually make it to trial yet to, to see what they order people to do. Not, on, not in my cases either yet. We've got Janice on the line with a question from Huntsville. Hi Janice, how are you, come, how are you tonight and what's your question? Hi, my question is if I have given DHR the address to the person for child support uh -huh. and they, I was just wondering if I needed to get a lawyer because they say they can't do anything until he say he resides there. He's, hmm. His um, driver's license has been suspended. So right. you, you've given them a new address. That's correct. Huh. For the payer or for yourself? No, for the payer. How far behind is he, Janice? Over three, over six years. So she said, said his driver's license is suspended. Yeah, so he's not and been paying. So DHR oftentimes prosecutes these, right? If it gets bad enough, they can, they can hit you with criminal non-support, which you can get jail time for. Yeah. You know, I, I would suggest you hire a lawyer, but it's, at the same time, DHR, they work for you know, They're for so, someone, so, you know, such as yourself to collect that child support. Now, would you get, you know, they do a good job. They're overwhelmed. I get it. It's a large caseload, but I would still recommend talking with a domestic attorney like Paul or Sharon to go ahead and, you know, maybe file something with the court. And, you know, some judges are ordering jail time and that's a, that's a good way. Well, that's one of the tools that's used to, 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 to stimulate these payments. If the guy can't pay it, I don't know if the judge will put him in jail, but if he or she is, you know, just totally phoning it in, not working, or, or, or worse, making money and just not paying it, the judge has got tools, you know, they have tools to, to do that. And what are some right, of those and, tools? And typically, um, each missed child support payment is subject to up to five days in jail. So certainly can be some pretty stiff fines if there's Paul, 36 months worth. Paul, is that a, is that a criminal payment. situation or is that a civil breach or... Uh, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Uh, contempt of court. It, it's civil contempt of court. If a judge orders you to do something and you don't do it, each instance of that that you do not follow the judge's order is subject to up to five days and a fine, um, but five days in jail. And, and back to her question, do you guys see the DHR 
pushing these issues, or is it usually up to an individual attorney such as yourselves? DHR is very good about helping um, families or recipients of child support um, after there hasn't been any child support paid for, I think, 90 days for them to get involved. Uh, the thing about DHR is typically the DHR attorneys handle those cases, so the client needing that child support who doesn't really have the money to go hire an attorney can use the DHR to, to recover that back child support so they're not out paying another attorney to do it. Yeah, a private lawyer might be able to take it and really run with it where mm -hmm. DHR might not, but then you've got to pay somebody and you didn't get the money in the first place. Right. They're telling us take a break. Let's take a break. Be right back answering more of your questions all about family law tonight. Stay with us. You're watching Way 31 Law Call, where lawyers come to help. Your rights, your calls, live. Hosted by family law attorney Sharon Doviat. With the personal injury attorneys of one of the Valley's most respected law firms, Timberlake and League. Featuring the knowledge of managing partner Michael Timberlake, with millions of dollars awarded to his clients. And the experience of attorney Will League, a strong courtroom fighter known for his commitment to winning and the fellow partners of Timberlake and League Heath Brooks and William Misurvey. This is Way 31 Law Call. Welcome back to 31 Law Call. I'm Sharon Doviet. Tonight we're taking calls and questions about family law, so divorce, child custody, things like that. We've got with us Will League and Paul Seckel. He is, Paul is an attorney from Marshall County and he does family law. Will, with Timberlake and League, they do personal injury cases. So who, in your world, who, which parent, if folks are divorced, who gets to sue on behalf of that child? If something comes up that somebody needs to bring a lawsuit, right. who can sue? Right. Okay, so I handle a lot of those cases. If, let's say, if parents are divorced, the custodial parent usually has the right to bring an action on behalf of the minor child. In wrongful death cases, it's you, you have to have an estate. Typically, kids don't have wills naming a personal representative. Typically, the personal representative of your estate is allowed to maintain an action for wrongful death or anything that has to do with those type of issues. However, if a child is, is killed without a will, perishes without a will, then you have to go to the probate court and petition the court for letters of testamentary, so giving either parent. So it's not really a race to the courthouse. The judge will consider that. Let's say mom goes and files letters. They will have to give father notice any if, if the child was married, which, you know, again, most of them aren't. 
but anybody who could take, would, they, would have to give, uh, they would have to give notice, they'll have a hearing, and the probate judge will determine who is the best suited to maintain an action on behalf of the minor child's estate. Gotcha. And so either one or an interested family member, whoever applies, if no one else applies, interested family member or somebody with the county could be appointed if no one could step up to do that. So many people, and now the, the proceeds go by intestate succession because again, there is no will. And so if you die without a will, your stuff doesn't go to the state like you think. It goes by the laws of intestate succession. If you're married, mostly to the wife. If you weren't married to the kids, if, if you didn't have any kids, the parents. So there's different gotcha. rules setting out the how the money would flow on any type of recovery, which is different than who has the ability to maintain the suit. The laws of intestate succession determine who receives the proceeds from a successful lawsuit. Gotcha. We have got callers waiting. We've got Susan on the line with a question from Ardmore, Alabama. Hi, Susan. Thanks for calling. What's your question tonight? Uh, I've got a question about divorce. Okay. I have uh, been living in Alabama. I moved here from Tennessee. I've been in Alabama since 2018. Okay. I've been separated since 2014. Okay. And I need to get a divorce. Um, I'm just wondering, can I go to a lawyer here, or do I have to go back to Tennessee and get a lawyer there? Okay. When, Paul, when, talk her through that. So when you moved here to Alabama, did your spouse move with you, or is he still a resident of Tennessee? Still a resident of Tennessee. Okay. So he, Alabama would not have what they call su sufficient minimum contacts to have your personal jurisdiction over your husband. So you would need to file that in Tennessee in the county in which he resides now that you are a resident of the state of Alabama. And it seems like that's so unfair. They're so close together. It's not very far apart, but it's, it's kind of intended to protect people from spouses moving way across the country, right? Absolutely. You don't want somebody moving to Colorado and they file for divorce in Colorado. You've never been to Colorado. That wouldn't be fair for you to have to go defend right. out there. That's right. Absolutely. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about... Um, signing your your parental rights away. We always hear people talking about um, I, their ex is so bad they just wish they'd sign their rights away. Or sometimes a parent actually says they'd like to sign their rights away and have nothing more to do with this child. Talk to us a little bit about what, what that really is. That's some hardcore stuff. That right. is tough. So, we, we hear this all day every day. And then, you, so, and then, and, and then adoption. Yeah. So by there, the new parent. there are juvenile dependency cases in which you can terminate a parent's rights, but unless the parents are in agreement with that, um, it's not going to get rid of child support. Uh, it's still going to um, make you have those kind of obligations. So um, typically you can't just sign your rights away. Um, and, you know, I personally believe that every child needs both mother and a father and so the more, I like to see more co-parenting and co-custody arrangements as opposed to um, one parent having the majority of the time. But uh, typically you can't just go to the court and say, I don't want my child anymore. I don't want to have to pay child support. Uh, there are special dependency cases that you can file termination of parental rights to do that. But that, like I said, typically that's not going to get rid of your child support. Let me ask you this, Paul and Sharon. Let's say mother, father, they have a child. They divorce. Father's paying child support. Mother marries, let's call him husband number two. Husband number two wants to adopt that child. Does the adoption, first off, does father have to agree, one, and two, if he does agree, does that terminate his rights and responsibilities for visitation and child support? So if, if the father um, consents to the adoption, uh, that would make that new parent, the adopting parent, the new legal father, um, it would, the only thing the original father would be able, um, the adopted child would be able to inherit from that if he passed away, but it would get rid of that child support obligation, custody. He would ab actually have no rights to his child at all once he consented to that adoption. 
We've got John on the line with a question from Leeton. Hi, John. Thanks for calling. What's your question tonight? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I've uh, been separated from my wife, I guess, uh, maybe over two years. Okay. And uh, when the stimulus checks come out, I didn't get one. And I think she got both of them since you know, they were pay taxes and stuff, our income tax. We, uh, we filed under both our names and stuff. And uh, I didn't get I didn't, you know. I didn't get no stimulus check. I think she got both of them. And you're thinking she got yours and hers. It, it, maybe, do you have any kids together? She may have gotten some of that, too. Well, we got two kids. They're all grown, though. Okay. They're both grown. Okay. You, it, Paul, you think it's probably pretty likely she, if he didn't get that money, she probably did. It, it's likely, it would really depend on how you filed taxes the year prior, which I guess would have been 2019, um, because I think most of those uh, stimulus checks went out based on however you filed taxes the 2019 tax year. And we've also seen a lot of those tax, uh, the stimulus payments getting intercepted. So, John, if you had any old arrearages for child support, um, the DHR, the state, has the ability to come in and intercept tax refunds, and we also saw them intercepting some of these tax Absolutely. stimulus money. So that could be where it went to, just if you had that issue. Let's take a break. We'll be right back answering more of your questions about family law. Stay with us.